from my high school, Ocean Township High School, to Pitt. Kenny Pickett is on the fan. What's up, Kenny? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Man, it's been a long time coming. Uh, <laughs> I'm proud, man. I, I, I literally I, I li- was choked up hearing you and A.B. talk about, you know, playing AAU basketball, Pop Warner. We all kind of came up in that same way. And uh, to see you two get to this point, I'm I'm just so proud. Yeah, thanks. Man. I appreciate it. I remember uh, being your ball boy at Ocean, so it's, it's been uh, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I was ball boy when I was 12, and I watched Ocean go win the 1999 state championship, and that inspired me. I remember going home and telling my mom, hey, I'm not going to be able to play varsity. She said, why? I'm like, these guys got hair on their chest. They got beards. I'm only three years younger than, you know, the freshman. I'm not going to mature fast enough to play varsity <laughs> football. Man, I remember you at age 11. I, I wanted to talk to you about this because I don't know if you remember. My memory of it is fuzzy. It was Big Red football camp, obviously, behind the school, back on the football field. I think you were 11 and I was 21, and Coach Klein had me as one of the coaches. I remember it was in the summer, so I was, like, partying every night and then waking up hungover but showing up. And uh, you were obviously already known in town as a good football player, baseball player, basketball player. And I think your group of, like, 11-year-olds might have been in seven-on-seven. And I might have been running whatever drills we were doing, whatever plays we were running. And I, like, remember you asking me a question before we, like, went into the plays. It was something about if you could, like, check the play or audible. And I, I was in college playing football, and I'm looking at you like, how does this kid even think to ask about checking a player audible in, <laughs> in camp? I'm like, this kid might be on to some. He might be pretty good. Do you remember that camp in that time? I do, man. I love the big red camps. Um I remember they had a basketball one. I don't know if they had a baseball one, but I remember every summer I looked forward to the football and uh, and basketball camps you guys had there. Yeah, so I like to think in my own mind that I inspired you playing varsity football. If we're 10 years apart, you know, you had to be seven when I was 17, six when I was 16. So when I was, you know, like all shore and we were going to the playoffs and we were winning games, I, in my mind, think that like I inspired you because when I was young, I was watching guys like uh, Billy Emkin and Trey Timbers and, uh, you know, the guys that were doing it when I was in elementary school. We would play football like behind the bleachers, under the bleachers in that backfield while the varsity was going. Do you have those same memories growing up in Ocean? 100 percent, man. That's all That's all we used to do is play football Friday nights while you guys played. We had practice on Saturdays and we had our games on Sundays. I remember we used to announce our games too, man. So, um, Wow. So- <laughs> big football, big football town, man. I forget about that sometimes. I really forget about that. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I used to call some of the Pop Warner games on Saturdays. Like I'll play a full on Friday night varsity game, and then uh, Sundays be at the field to call the Pop Warner games. And that's actually where this got started for for me. I remember being nervous at first, and really I was nervous because. I didn't want to pronounce people's names wrong and have their whole family or parents yelling at me. But I remember somebody's dad came up to that window and he said to me, he's like, hey, you have a good voice. You should go to school for this. You should go to school for communication. And at 16, 17 years old, I had no idea what that meant. But that did stick with me. I was like, okay, maybe I could be something, you know, maybe I could be some kind of sports broadcaster, announcer. And yeah, Ocean Township started that for me. That started uh, the foundation for you. And uh, look at how far we've taken it, man. I, I, If I didn't say it enough, I'm so proud of you. I remember watching you come up and um, share with the people where you were recruited, what your official visits were, what schools you were looking at before you chose Pitt. Yeah, so uh, originally I was committed to Temple when Coach Rule was there. Um, I ended up decommitting. He took off to Baylor. Um, but then I had some bigger schools coming in. I had Pitt, Boston College, North Carolina. Uh, Mizzou at a time um, was getting calls for some SEC schools, so my recruiting started to heat up uh, in June. Going into my senior year, I committed to Pitt uh, with Coach Narduzzi and Coach Canada was there at the time. Uh, so he's now with the Steelers. Coach Rule is now with the Panthers. So I saw some familiar faces going on these visits, and uh, it was it was cool to see them and uh, kind of like back when I was in high school. So yeah, I ended up uh, being solid with Pitt and was there for five years. 
Yeah, these football coaches, they all move around. There were guys like like Chip Kelly called my landline to recruit me. Like these these guys end up recruiting. Um, I think he was at University of New Hampshire at the time, and then they end up somewhere else. So you always end up crossing paths. Interesting that Matt Rule is with Carolina. Uh, we'll see what happens on draft day. But let's talk about Pitt a little bit. I remember being in my apartment on the couch oh. watching you as a freshman knock off undefeated Miami. Tell us a little bit about that experience. I felt like that was the one that put you on the map. I had been telling people all season about you, but then I could point at that highlight and say, look at this kid. He dove for the pylon. He beat Miami. That's my guy. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good first start. I don't think you could draw it up better than that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I burned my red stripe, I think, halfway through the season against Syracuse. Um, saw some time sporadically. Ended up playing the week prior to that against Virginia Tech. We lost a tough one on the road. But I think it really helped me going to Miami, being my first start at home uh, and first start really overall, um, and being able to win. And uh, as a true freshman, it was it was great for our seniors. It was an awesome game, and uh, definitely one of my favorite memories looking back on my career. That takes moxie. That takes courage. That's a rare individual to be able to step in as a freshman and knock off undefeated Miami. I was so hyped. I wish there was a camera on me for that. I remember telling my <laughs> wife like like. I, I knew this kid was going to be like this. Now he's going to carry Pitt the rest of the way. So you battled through the ACC, and then you were finally able to get that trophy. How did that feel to go through your you know four years and then finally be, finally be able to be a champion and win the ACC? Yeah, it was unbelievable. My whole time, my whole career there, that's all we talked about is winning that. Um, so I was able to go back 20 in the 2021 20, season and we were able to accomplish that and had such a great year. I mean, so many accomplishments across the board for our whole entire team and capping it off with the ACC championship trophy was um, pretty unbelievable. It was everything that we, we dreamed of as a team, so it was an awesome feeling. And you had a viral moment, and I laughed so hard when I saw it. It was so swaggy. I was like, OT <laughs> Rev, these ocean boys are wavy. The fake slide. So I think everyone in the world saw the fake slide. If you don't know, my boy Kenny was – running and it looked like they wanted to tackle him but they didn't actually tackle him so he dipped down real quick like he was gonna slide boop boop hit the sideline turn the burners on scores flips the ball I'm like this kid is a legend and literally he is a legend they have now put a rule in so that you can't slide like that anymore Kenny man tell us did you practice that beforehand did you know you were gonna do that or was that just like instinctual no, man, never practiced it. Um, a lot of people thought I planned it. I mean, you don't plan something like that in a championship game. Um, just kind of instinctual. I saw him pulling up. I thought I kind of just hit like a stutter step uh, originally, and then I watched it. I was like, oh, okay, I definitely dragged my back foot. Um, but, you know, it definitely should be a rule. Shouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, but it's it's pretty cool to, to see that, you know, a rule's been, you know, named after you, and that's something that you left your mark on in college football. So definitely a cool moment. It's about changing the game. We are changing the game. You literally changed the game, Kenny. <laughs> I love it, bro. I love it, bro. So, you know, I saw you I saw you at your pro day. Um, and, you know, how did that go? Speak to what it, what it felt like going back to Pitt and uh, having your pro day in front of, you know, all your homies and the potential NFL teams that could be picking you. Yeah, it felt great, man. We did. I mean, Pro day script, I mean, those are the, you're just throwing routes on air pretty much. And uh, that's something I've done at Pitt, I mean, God, probably thousands of times. So to, to do it in front of a, a bit of a stage, a bit of a crowd, and have it on TV was, was really cool. But it was just another day for us. Um, so we went out there and, and put on a, a good workout. I was happy with it, happy with how I performed throughout this whole process, honestly. Um, you know, I feel like I put my best foot forward and everything. And I'm excited to see how it kind of unfolds here next week. You did, man. You did. I mean, you could have went into the draft last year, but you came back to prove that you were the top quarterback, that you were the top guy. I watched you in the Senior Bowl practices and then in the Senior Bowl, prove it. And then we had a whole episode of my show the night of the combine, the hand measurements. And I'm talking like, you know, hey, throw all of that out. It's not about that. My guy, Kenny Two Gloves, you can't measure his heart. You can't measure the type of player he is. That won't matter. I know you're probably tired of talking about it, but speak to the combine experience because after the whole measurement thing, you came out slinging the ball and people were quiet. Yeah, man, there wasn't much talk about it after the uh, the night of throwing. I feel like I had a great workout, um, and I, I knew that's how it was going to be. I mean, I, I had a great senior bowl week and I played well in the game, so I mean, it was just 
um, just going out there and, and doing my thing, honestly. Um, but it, it was something that I feel like the media definitely got carried away with. Um, re- really was not a question asked by a lot of teams. Um, say, no, I'm, I'm excited to uh, hear my name called and, and start my next journey. Absolutely. It's coming soon. We're a week away from the NFL draft. WFAN will have a whole draft party in the Meadowlands at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Check that out. Once again, we're talking to Kenny Pickett, Pitt quarterback, also quarterback from my hometown, Ocean Township quarterback. Going into the draft, he should be the number one quarterback taken. So, Kenny, question about Friday beers. I don't know if everyone knows Friday beers, almost Friday. (laughs) I'm a Friday beers guy. I've been following them, and I've actually connected with those guys uh, over Zoom, talked to them. I like their whole brand. I watched them shoot up. How did you get connected with them, get featured with them? I remember seeing your little, you know, beer can celebration, and the next thing you know, you were on Friday beers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it, I forget how it started, man. I just, I think their stuff is hilarious. I think they have some, uh, some good merch. Some, I like that they're just kind of good guys that just want to make people laugh and have a good time. So um, I think that's just kind of how it started. And uh, I just, we kind of talk once in a while, but hopefully I can meet those guys in person soon. Oh, you definitely will, man. They're out here. And I actually got to hit them up. I, I got some ideas for them now. I got to reconnect with, with those guys. But I also saw you with the Barstool guys and, uh, you know, doing their shows. And, and they kind of really were putting clips out there for you. They're behind you, too. How'd you connect with them? Um, I think just through social media, honestly. Uh, they're all good guys. I'm talk to Jersey Jerry once in a while, Big Cat. Um, so I got a chance to tour, tour the uh, headquarters and, and, and talk to those guys after the uh, ACC basketball tournament. I went to go see Pitt play and stopped there on the way. So um, just another group of people I think that, you know, that are just good people, like to have fun. Um, you know, yeah, overall, just good people I want to connect with. That's right. That's right. You, I remember you were in town, and I think I was trying to get you on uh, during that time you were in New York, but – you know, there was probably football stuff, baseball lockout, who knows. But um, let's talk about the Heisman, man. That's the dream. I remember being a kid watching Eric Crouch win the Heisman, and I wanted to go to college and win the Heisman. You actually got to that stage. You didn't win it, but that's fine. Tell us about the experience uh, being one of the finalists, coming to New York, being at that that uh, award ceremony. Like, that's a that's a dream for a quarterback, man. Yeah, it is, and it's something that, like you said, like when you were young, you saw someone win. I, mean, I saw, yeah, I remember I would watch like Matt Liner, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, when they were all battling for it, that kind of era was my first memory of it. Um, so being on that stage and, and seeing all those legends that night and uh, meeting a lot of great people and legends of the sport, it was a pretty surreal moment. Glad I could, you know, kind of take it all in with my fiance and my parents, my sister was there, so it was it was an awesome night. Hey, you just mentioned your parents, your fiance. Speak a little bit about your support system, man. Me following you, I've seen them. And uh, obviously me being from Ocean, I've known about them, heard about them. I think I've I've tagged you when I was at Rook. And whenever I'm in town shop over there, Oakhurst Pizza, I just always think of Kenny Pickett because I know you lived down the street over there, not far from the high school. Speak a little bit you know, to your parents. Give your parents some love, your girls some love, and, and just speak to how they've supported you through all of this. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't ask for a really a better support system. I mean, sorry, my parents and how much they invested in me to, to get to this point. I definitely would not be here without them. And, uh, um, you know, my fiance, she's like my best friend. I talk to her about everything, and um, I love her so much. And I couldn't ask for a better partner in life. So uh, I can't I can't speak highly enough or talk about them enough. But uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that call Thursday night and, and enjoying that and kind of soaking that moment in with them and, you know, seeing all the hard work come to fruition together. Yeah, that's going to be a great moment. I, I might tear up seeing you guys have that moment because it's real for me, you know. Um, man, the draft. Are you are you going to the draft or are you going to have your own little draft party? I'm not. I'm going to be staying home for it. Uh, I want to make sure my grandparents are there. They're another key part uh, of helping me get to this point. So I want to make sure my whole support system's there and, uh, you know, we can, can all kind of enjoy the moment together. You're going to be in big red country? You're going to be in Jersey and OT? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to say it forever, bro. I mean, (laughs) I remember seeing you as a young kid and just believing in you, man. In high school, I think you guys played against Red Bank. (sighs) Not to bring it up. I know it's probably a sore subject. I wanted you guys to win state. (laughs) I wanted you guys to win the championship. Tyler Thompson. I think you guys lost to Red Bank. And I was telling people back then, I'm like, they're going to beat them. They're going to win. They're going to beat them. You know, I mean, we're going off track a little bit, but speak to your experience in 
the Shore Conference in the Central Jersey, what were we, Group 3 playoffs and those runs because that was the first, like, big stage before you got to Pitt, before you got to those big games. You know, you were in them in high school. Right. Yeah, we had a lot of big games throughout my high school career. And uh, I think the football in Central Jersey is great. I mean, I know the, um, the football up north gets talked about a lot more, but there's been so many great players to, to come out of the Shore. And uh, I'm glad to continue that legacy and add on to that. Um, but I think all my experiences at Ocean and um, getting getting ready to go play college and competing against all the top guys in the state, um, I think that really helped me, you know, have a successful college career. So I can't, you know, speak highly enough of, of where I'm from and uh, how I grew up playing football. Did you get to use that new weight room while you were in school? No, nah, no, nah, I mean, they waited. They, as soon as I left, they waited to put that in there. I was in that tin, that, like, Bruh. box they had with the <laughs> rust, rusted dumbbells. Yeah, it was all the same since you've been there. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, I enjoyed that though. I mean, there, was, there wasn't many people in there. That's kind of where the lonely work started. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. I'm sure you were in the thousand yard club too. I remember riding my bike from Middlebrook to Ocean High School to go work out, sometimes sneaking into the gym, coach Conti getting mad at me because there's no supervision. And I'm like, relax, this gym sucks. It's rusty. <laughs> it's old. I'm just trying to gain some weight so I can play varsity next year. Um, what yeah, about the field? Did you play on the turf field? I did. I did. It was. They just put that down uh, when I got there, so that was good. But I had that, that same weight room as you. Man, I missed out on the turf field, but we paved the way for that turf field. I used to play on the mud with the orange pellets. I used <laughs> to play on that field, and we scored touchdowns and you know won the state championship. And then a couple years later, I guess – they felt like it was time to get turf, so I never got to play on that on that turf at Ocean. <laughs> hey, man, one more question before we go to break. Two more. Um, I know you said you were taking some visits. Are you allowed to speak on teams that you visited with, or uh, you know who you're who you've met with, or who you're getting a sense for that might be interested in you on draft day in a week? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's the teams that everyone would expect. I mean, the quarterback needy teams um, met with a ton of them. Uh, visited a few of them. Uh, they, they all went really well, so um, I'm really excited to get to get to Thursday and find out where my my new home will be and um, get started on that journey. All right, one more. Do you remember the fight song, Bula Bula? Yeah, I do. Can I get a Bula Bula out of you? The whole entire thing. I'll start it off. I don't even remember it. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Bula Bula. Bula Bula. bula, bula, bula. It's, it's the war, the war cry. cry. Of the, of the Spartans. Spartans. They will hound you. They, they will ground you <laughs> till you <laughs> holler. Yeah, yeah, bula, bula, rah, rah, rah. rah. Let's go. <laughs> Kenny Pickett, ladies and gentlemen. We got to take a break. When we come back, Kenny will talk a little bit with Don Klein, who coached me in high school and him in high school. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here. This is Keith McPherson. You're listening to The Fan. Our head coach, our head ball coach, Don Klein. What's up? You both are on. How we doing, boys? <laughs> great coach how are you i'm I'm good k-mac thanks for having me on thanks for having us both on tonight it's great when was the last time you guys chatted today i <laughs> uh, think yesterday okay cool yeah we we uh we, we stay in we stay in touch pretty regularly well kenny uh just wanted you to know those drills and some of the things that coach klein did with you you know even uh some of the recruiting and and going to camps and that stuff he he learned with me. I was the uh, the crash dummy. I was the test quarterback first. He, he learned with me, and then you came along 10 years ago or 10 years <laughs> after. Perfect. It worked out. It, it did. You know, I, th- I think it was good, too, you know, with uh, going through that so early at the quarterback spot with, with you, Keith. And, um, you know, a little bit of a different process, obviously, but it was good experience, uh, you know, to, to, to lead me into Kenny there. Awesome. Hey, Kenny, we're going to let you go. I know you're busy, man. Any last words, anything you want to say to anyone listening, to me, to coach, or whoever? You got it. Uh, no, nah, man, just thank you to everyone who supported me throughout my career. It's been a you know, hell of a journey. It's not done yet, but I'm, I'm definitely excited for Thursday, and uh, Coach Klein will be there, and uh, I'm looking forward to enjoying that, that uh, lifelong, probably working towards this moment. Yes, sir. You're the man, Kenny. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Proud of you, Kenny. Thanks, Coach. See you.